He was like, hey, Alec, this is uh, the ref, the official ref. Unfortunately, I'm like, here we go. Unfortunately, we have to disqualify you and your Kona slot is going down to the next person. Okay, welcome back to the Chan Chan. I've filmed this video three times now. Well, this is the third time and honestly, it just sucks every time. I'll admit, my videos are pretty boring. And that's totally a me problem. Even when I take notes and I have an outline and try to plan the video out, it still fucking sucks. So what I want to talk about is Iron Man 2022 Waco. I want to discuss all the thoughts and emotions leading up to the race. I want to talk about the actual race, how it went, the to do's and not to do's. And then also I'm going to give you guys final thoughts and talk about the whole DQ thing. I hate when videos are like, wait till the end and stick around and they try to clickbait you. I wanna let you guys know this is not clickbait. I did get disqualified and lost my Kona spot. So if that's all you clicked the video for, there you go, you guys can close out. If you wanna hear about the race and hear about what happened and why I got disqualified, then stick around. Obviously there's a lot of things that I wanna talk about, but I'm gonna hold those for other videos. Things like nutrition, things like all of the what to do and what not to do. All that stuff, any of those topics, guys, just comment below what you want to know about Iron Man in general, and I'll try to make videos on those topics. Number one, huge mistake. Don't drive to where you're going. Don't drive to the destination. Invest the money. Fly. It was 25 hours for Mongo and I. Now, as the trip was fun, um, it was just too much. The reason we did drive is because we didn't have the travel cases for our bikes, so we're like, screw it. Let's just drive. When you get to an Iron Man race, you're seeing kind of like the barricades being set up. You see all the Iron Man signs. You see the Iron Man village and the tents, all the people, the bikes rolling around. You hear it when the windows are down and you're driving. You hear the bikes going by. There's energy. You're like, oh, fuck. I'm just like psyched, like so psyched. The other thing I was thinking about was like, dude, I just hope, I had a lot of worries. Like I hope my nutrition plan goes well. I hope I don't bonk on the run or on the bike because I have had training days where I've been biking and I'm four hours in and I feel like absolute shit. I'm like, please God, it's Alec. Also too, please, for the love of God, don't let me get a flat, please, just no flat. The biggest expectation I had of myself, I think the thing that I was most worried, not worried, but nervous about was Kona. Now for those of you guys that don't know what Kona is, Kona is the most iconic race in full distance triathlon. It is like the World Series, the Super Bowl of Ironman. And to qualify, you have to win your age group. I mean, that's the most, that's the best way to guarantee a slot. And so I saw on this race, I'm like, dude, they have one slot allocated for the 25 to 29 age group. I'm like, I had an attitude. I'm like, I am going to win the Ironman Kona slot. And I looked at the dates. Next year in 2023, Kona is on my birthday. Not that it matters, but it was like my 30th birthday doing Kona. How freaking cool would that be? The swim felt really good. They advertised it as 0.6 miles up the Brazos River upstream and then you're 1.8 miles downstream. Now when I got in the water, I felt like I was swimming downstream and then swimming upstream. The swim was hard. It took me an hour and seven minutes. I was expecting to swim it in like 58, so I was way off my goal. But when I came out of the water and looked at my watch, I was like, all right, that evolution is complete. I can put it behind me. I'm good. I feel good. I had a gel right when I got out of the water. I was like, let's move on to the bike. Let's focus on that. The only thing I was thinking about was a flat tire. And I was like, dude, I don't want to put energy into this. I'm like, just please don't let me get a flat tire. However, there was something else I had to think about, which was getting lost. I don't want to make excuses because there's a simple solution to this. And that is study the course. And I'm going to say this now and I'll say it again. Study the course, study the course, study the course. I didn't study the course because in Oceanside, it's so well marked. When I got on the bike, like a mile in, I'm looking around. And I came out of the water 21st and I'm like, dude, where is everyone? I'm like, what the hell? And I'm getting frustrated. I'm like, dude, this is like my worst nightmare. I literally had dreams months before the race that I got lost on the course. I slowed down completely. I look around, I'm looking for strangers or like passerbys, you know, like, hey, is this the right way? One, one girl was like, yeah, I think so. And I'm like, oh, it's all right. So I'll slow down and I'll wait for the person behind me to catch up and I'll let him take the lead. Maybe he knows where to go. It was just like, there was no signs or like volunteers out there be like this way, this way. There was no clear marked bike path, I guess. The heat was gnarly, but I stayed on top of that. I'm not gonna talk about that. The bike course was 3000 feet of vertical incline. It's more than I thought. I thought it was a flatter course. It's not that. I ended up working myself into uh, like eighth place on the bike. Actually, I ended up working myself into fifth on the bike. And then when I stopped at mile 57 for my personal needs bag to get two more bottles of nutrition, I got passed. But anyways, I was like, there was this guy in a neighborhood and 
and uh, I think it was around mile 30 or I can't remember. He goes, you're doing great. You're two minutes back from first place. And I'm thinking two minutes back, I can't be right. I do loop two and then Kara, my mom and my grandma found me at mile like 70 or 80. Kara goes, you're second in your age group. You're like eighth overall. I'm like, what? Kind of gnarly. I got this Kona slot. This is mine, dude. Like I just have to race smart. So I ended up bridging the gap. I caught up to uh, pass the guy in my age group. So I was now first place in the age group and then I put 26 minutes on the dude. So I came off the bike in five hours and six minutes, which was fifth overall bike time and then eighth overall in the race. I'm like, I've never been that far up in a race. Again, my fault. Should I have studied the run course? Probably, but I think as an, and this is my honest, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just giving you guys like honest if I'm talking to a friend. You want the course to be well marked. There was over 600 people that started the race and I believe there's only 381 that finished and I would bet money that other people did what I did and they got lost on the course and they didn't run the prescribed run course. I ended up skipping this little out and back, which equated to like half a mile. I got to mile seven, I got lost again. Someone luckily saw me. He's like, yo, are you in first place? And I'm like, no. He's like, you're in fifth, aren't you? I go, yeah. He must've been tracking. He's like, bro, you're going the wrong way. Follow me. This guy runs like a mile with me. So I had to double back on myself. So I ended up making up the distance that I had missed in mile two, but I never knew that until later. And then it was at mile 13 and a half, I had, I was on my second loop of the run course and I caught up to Mongo, my buddy. We're running and we get to mile two and there's the out and back and I'm running up this hill and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, dude, either my brain is fried or I just straight up do not remember running this. I just didn't remember doing it. I'm like, did I miss this on the first loop? Turns out I did. So I guess I kind of knew in my head, I was like, dude, they're gonna disqualify me. If you miss one of those timing mats, like they disqualify you. I finished the race with a time of 10 hours and 42 minutes and 30 seconds. First in my age group, eighth overall or ninth. And amazing race. As soon as I finished, the guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, are you Alec? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, what is your total distance on the run? I was just shy of 26 miles and I was 0.18, which is less than a lap around a track, short on the run course. He goes, I need you to send me your run file. So the full distance of a full Ironman is 140.6 miles. I was at 140.7 miles, so actually a little over. Once I sent them the file, they called me like an hour later and he was like, hey, Alec, this is uh, the ref, the official ref. How you doing? Unfortunately, I'm like, here we go. Unfortunately, we have to disqualify you and your Kona slot is going down to the next person because you didn't run the prescribed run course. I was like, dude, fuck this. This is so annoying. Immediately, I'm like victim. I'm like blaming. I'm like, why didn't you have people out there? But also it's true. Why didn't you have people out there? Even if you study the course, it's different than studying it on paper and going out there and actually running it. It's hard, Once one would argue that, oh, why don't you go walk the course or bike it? Well, they don't have it set up yet. It's, it's tough, okay, it's tough. And I should have done it, but I didn't. But also too, I wish there was people out there and I don't wanna play the victim card and be like, of course this happens to me. This shit always happens to me. And I even told the guy too, I was like, look, I would never purposely cheat. I would never try to cut corners, especially all the hard work I put into this. My fa I, it like would never cross my mind. I would never do that. And he was like, I know, I would never accuse you of that. So that was good, but all in all, it was fun. There's like so much more to unpack and I think this will be in other videos. I will say like the fact that I didn't get a flat tire, the fact that I had such a stellar bike and like a solid run. Also too, like I surprised myself with how well I did and now I'm like have that much more fuel to be okay, like take this seriously, get a plan, get a coach, put more time into recovery and stretching and go back and win the whole thing. It was also just like a bunch of fun. It was so cool having care out there, my mom, my grandma, them cheering. It was cool that I did that well in my first one. And no one honestly probably gives a shit either. No one even knows that this even, they don't know what Kona is. I think it's just more of a me thing. I just wanted to do it. Also too, there's an award ceremony. So it's also an ego thing. It's like, I wanted to be called up. They're like in first place in the age group and ninth overall, Alec, and then you get an award. I probably would have posted that. Look at me, I got an award. I don't know, it's just dumb. It, it's like half ego, half frustration, and then like 99% my own fault. 
All right, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed that. <clears throat> be sure to subscribe to the Chan Chan. Please be sure to subscribe to the Chan Chan. Comment below what type of videos you want to see in regards to the Iron Man. And uh, make sure to study your run courses, ladies and gentlemen.